Luke chapter 7. Chapter 7, verse 19. The disciples of John, actually go back to 18, reported all these things to him. Now, why did they report it to him? Because he was in prison. He had been arrested because he had told Herod that he should not have married, got killed his brother, to marry his brother's wife. Just a minor offense. And he was in prison. And then it says that he sent, called two of his disciples to him, sent them to the Lord saying, are you the one who is to come or shall we look for another? This was saying John the Baptist that had baptized him. Same one said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And when the men came to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you saying, are you the one who is to come or shall we look for another? In that hour, he had healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits. And on many who were blind, he bestowed sight. In other words, these two disciples were able able to see some of the accomplishments and some of the things that Jesus was doing. And he answered them, go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor of good news preached to them, and blessed is the one who has not offended of me. Interesting. A lot of lot of stories, a lot of facts, a lot of truths. But for those that say we should never question God, I think. John the Baptist questioning, are you the one? Are you the one? And I remember what Jesus said about John the Baptist. He said, there's no greater in the kingdom than John the Baptist. So they had questions. Some of you today have questions. Not wrong to question. Chances are, you can come to me and I'll say, I don't know. You can go to Gator and he'll say, I don't know. Why are you asking me? We don't have the answer many times, but God can give the answer. And God can give us the answer. But I see John being a little discouraged. You say, how could John be discouraged? Have you ever been discouraged? Huh? Have you ever been discouraged? Have you ever wondered? Well, John was just a little bit going through it, and he sent these two disciples to just find out. And Jesus said, go and tell John all that you're seeing. Now, we know this was sent to John the Baptist as an individual. But as I was reading this, something just jumped out at me. He said, go and tell John. See, we know John the Baptist is an individual, but how many of you ever heard the phrase John Doe or Jane Doe? Those are people that we don't know. Either we don't know their identity or maybe they're trying to hide their identity. John Doe. And as I was thinking about it, I I thought, well, you know, God's sending all of us to go tell John. Maybe not John the Baptist, but Brother Brown, he's telling all of us, go tell John or Jane, or maybe you could put your daughter's name and their son's name in there. Go and tell them what Jesus is doing, because Jesus is doing some awesome things. You say, wait a minute, Jesus has been dead a long time. He's still doing some awesome things through the power of his Holy Spirit and through the, uh, his people. I said a while ago that we don't know the answer, and many times I don't know it, and they're rational, but I know that God can reveal that knowledge to me, just like he can to you. But I wanted to emphasize today to go tell John. Go tell John. See, Peter tells us that we need to be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in us. 
Yet do it with gentleness and respect. I left that out the first service this morning because nobody in the 8 o'clock service needed it. <laughs> Just teasing. I really wanted to emphasize it because, see, God does speak to us and tell us to tell John. But he tells us to do it with gentleness and respect. You're not going to get very weird if you tell John, you're going to hell. And I'm going to shout when that happens. Well, that's the way some people do. God wants us to tell John and tell Jane what God can do. Tell it out of love and respect. And if people come with us with legitimate questions, now, when I say legitimate, there's some people that just want to argue. Tell them to watch CNN, watch Fox News, but that we don't have time to argue, but we can tell them about Jesus. He said, go tell John what you're seeing. He said, well, I haven't seen much. Okay, let's try to see more. Let's try to see what God would have us do and what, how we uh, need to minister to us. Isn't that what Jesus said in the Great Commission? Huh? Now, the Great Commission was, was a commandment. It wasn't a great suggestion. It was going to what? All the world. Well, let's read it. Let me go to Matthew chapter 28, just so you'll know that we're reading the right scriptures. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the age. In other words, I think he was saying, go tell John. You don't know their names. Go to the ends of the earth. Go tell Jane. But God said, go. Now, does that mean that all of us are supposed to be missionaries and go overseas? No. Many of you know the story of John chapter 4. I use this and refer to it often, so it's an awesome story. story about the Samaritan woman. There's so many truths there. But for the sake of the message this morning, let's limit it to a little bit. Go to chapter 4 of John, verse 25. John chapter 4, verse 25. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. It's an amazing thing. The chapter before that, who was, the, who was the principal chapter in that one, uh, character? Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a well-educated, well-thought-of person. Jesus never told him that he was Messiah. He just told him, you know, it must be born again. But here was a Samaritan woman. He said, I'm the one that you're looking for. Okay, just then the disciples came back, and they marveled that he was talking with a woman. But no one said, what do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? That's an amazing thought. She left her water jar. That's what she came for. He says, This man's telling me all this. See, I left out part of it. Part of it is he told her that you've been married five times. Now, we often assume that she'd been divorced five times, but that could have been they might have all died. But we do know that she was living with a man that was not her husband. So we don't know. But in all likelihood, this person had been rejected. This woman had been pushed aside. At the, and the good folks didn't mingle with her. And she was a Samaritan. Now, the Jews were very, very racist. They didn't like Gentiles. And they hated Samaritans because they were mixed Gentiles and Jews. They hated them. And here there was, Jesus was talking to this woman, and it wasn't proper for a man to be talking with a woman, especially with probably her reputation. And yet Jesus was talking to her, and she left her water pot and went, and look what she did. Look what she did. 
Come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? Drop down to verse 39. Verse 39. So many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I have ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. You know, I've told this story numerous times, and I don't know that I remember that it said stay there two days. It was unusual to talk with them, but he spent the night with them. He stayed there two days, reaching out to them, the people that were despicable. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm glad Jesus reaches the despicable. There's a lot of people that thought that ran in my family. I inherited it. I was born that way. We were the despicable ones. I'm glad that God loves despicable ones. And I'm glad that God told somebody, go tell John. Except in my case, go tell Daryl that Jesus Christ is real. That Jesus Christ loves me. And it says, it is, they said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ. What am I saying? I'm telling you that in essence, this woman went to tell John. She told her neighbors. She told the people that she might not have known. But she said, there's a man named Jesus that told me everything about me. It has to be the Christ. And there were people that came that didn't believe because they thought she was Christ. They just wanted to come because that woman believed in it so much. Good friend of mine, Barry Taylor, his, his dad was named Giant Taylor. Any of you, or that's what he went by. Giant Taylor got saved later on in life, and, and God called him to preach. And, and he told this story, so I, I guess it would be true. And he had just started preaching good, and he had preached a revival, and he preached and preached and preached, and the very first service, a man came to the altar and received Jesus Christ as his Savior. And after the service, Giant asked him, he wanted to find out, well, well, what was it that really got you? He said, well, you want me to be honest with you? I said, yeah. He said, you preached so bad, but you believed it so good. <laughs> it might have been like that with this woman. She had a reputation. She had friends. He said, I want you to come see a man. I believe she fulfilled that. Go tell John. Go tell Jane because the multitudes came. A bunch of people came because somebody went to tell John. In the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 5, we find another neat story. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Jezerines. And when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Tombs. Okay, what was this? This was a cemetery. This was graves. This was caves. Okay? And he lived among the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. I think you could say this was a wild man. For lack of a better term, I think you could say a wild man. And Jesus Ask his name, but I think Jesus was going to John. You tell, go tell John. And he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart and he broke the shackles in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him and crying out with a loud voice, What have you done with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you, my God, do not torment me. He said, I'm tormented enough. I've got torment enough. For he was saying to him, Come out of him. Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And Jesus asked him, What is your name? And he replied, My name is Legion. For we are many. What was he talking about? All the demonic forces within him. This person was demon possessed. They called him Legion because he had so many demonic spirits in him. And I know some say, well, I don't believe in demons. Well, you can go in some places and you can see it, okay? Amen. But this man had it. Demons. 
so strong upon him they couldn't even chain him down. Lived in the tombs. People were fearful. By his own admission, he was tormented day and night. My name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. And now a great herd of pigs. I'm just going to read that part. Because see, pigs, Jews were not supposed to have pigs. They said, let me go into these pigs. And he sent them into the pigs. Amazing thing. First mass suicide we had in history. Suicide. Some of y'all get that after a while. It went right over the head. <laughs> this man had issues. I said, this man had issues. There's not a one of you here that had more issues than this guy. And Jesus set him free. You can pick out your, the worst guy you know. You may not even know their name. You can just call him John. Or if it's a woman, you can call him Jane. I can tell you that Jesus is the answer to their problem. Amen. Jesus can minister to them. And we find that Legion was delivered. But that, the story don't end there. Go on reading. We find out as he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed with demons begged him that he might be with him. I want to go with you, Jesus. And Jesus did not permit it, but said, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. What's he saying? He said, listen, you go tell John. You go tell Jane. You go tell those people that don't know me what God has done for you. You go and tell them. And he went away. Did he fulfill his scripture? Did he fulfill his obligation? Yes, even more than we realize. It says, and he went away and began to proclaim in Decap Decapolis. You say, well, what city was Decapolis? It wasn't a city. It was an area. Ten cities. Ten cities that he went to, and he told them how much Jesus had done for him, and everyone marveled. It's an amazing thing. When God does something awesome, and God does something good, and we go tell John, we go tell Jane, we go tell those people, go tell our friends and neighbors. And some of you know that when you got saved and your, your family looked at you and said, well, we'll just check it out after a while. Huh? Gator's nodding his head. They said, it, it, it'll never stick with Gator. Gator's got that hard-headed stuff, okay? Hard-tied head. That's what Gator, Gator said. They got that hard-tied head. But guess what? When God does something, he does it well. Come on. When God does something, he does it well. And Legion was delivered. And he said, what do you do? Well, go tell John. Go tell other people what God has done for you. John chapter 9 speaks of a man that was born blind, that was healed by Jesus. A very unique healing. Jesus would probably be arrested today if he put spit on dirt and stuck it in somebody's eye. Huh? But this man was healed. Everybody marveled. And the, they asked the man, who did this? And he said, I don't know. It's a man, later on he said, it's a man they called Jesus. All I know is that he, I once was blind, but now I can see. His family, this dad and mom, they approached them and said, listen, ask him. They were afraid of being put out of church. There are a lot of people afraid of being put out of church. If you get out put out of church because you have too much faith, have too much belief in God, then friends, you probably are blessed. They told this man, go tell John. There were times that Jesus told the people not to speak of his miracles. 
Now, the reason of that is because the timing was so critical. And there were times they wanted to make him king. And he said, no, I didn't come to be king. I came to seek and to save that which was lost. Then there were other times they wanted to kill him. And he said, it's not time. i got to die at a certain time, a certain hour to fulfill all scripture. But many times he said, go tell John. Go tell John. And I know somebody said, well, I don't have a, a current or recent testimony. That's a good, good statement, but why not? I said, why not? Because God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Every year, the people like to begin a year with a fast, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I recommend it. That's, that's you. But see, so many times we fast for things. We fast because we want God to do something for us. What if we fasted and say, God, reveal to me somebody that needs to hear about Jesus. See, that's what a true intercessor does. God, show me somebody. Let me, show me a John. Show me a Jane. I was, I was having my socks blessed off this week. Part of the time I don't even wear socks. No, I'm just teasing. Uh, no, I really did. A guy, if I called his name, a lot of you know him. He, 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 said, he said, I'm not a church person. He said, but somebody asked me the other day, they're new in the area, they want to know which church to go to. And he said, the only church I would recommend is Oxford Assembly of God because they live what they preach. Man, what a testimony. What a testimony. Now, I'm, not, I'm just quoting him. That he told me, he said, that's the only church. Does he attend here? No, he don't attend any church. But folks, we got a great God that does great things. And we need to go tell John. Go tell Jane that God loves them. God takes care of them. And if we don't have a recent testimony, let's spend some time and fasting and praying, ask God to give us a new th relationship, a new depth that we can go and tell somebody, this is what God has done for me. See, James tells us about selfish prayers. James chapter 4, verse 1. What causes quarrels and what causes fights? Send them to Washington, D.C. No, that's not the answer. What causes fights and what causes quarrels? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. And if you do ask, you ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly. To spend it on your passions. Selfish prayers. I'm not saying it's wrong to ask God for things. But how many knows there's a lot of things more valuable than things? That stuff, you're going to leave it here. I said, you're going to leave that stuff here. But the lives you impact, you'll take with you. So go tell John. Now, when Jesus was telling John's two disciples, he said, you, you go tell him what you've seen. People are being healed. People are being delivered. Wonderful things happening. But I'm glad we have to add a P.S. We have to add a, a post-transcript, something that happened later. And what happened later is recorded in Luke chapter 7, verse 22. Luke chapter 7, verse 22. I think I got it here. No, it's not. It's Mark chapter 16, verse 4. I knew that something was wrong. Mark chapter 16, verse 4. And looking up, they saw the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has risen. 
He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they lay in him, but go tell his disciples and Peter that he's going before you to Galilee. Go tell his disciples and Peter that he is not here. He has risen. That's the only religion in the world that celebrates a resurrected Savior, a resurrected God, the God that's still alive, that's still well today. And you and I can tell us we serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he has risen because he lives within my heart. Amen. We can tell him that. And I love the fact that he said, I want you to go tell his disciples and tell Peter. Now, why in the world would he say that? He could have just as easily said, go tell his disciples and John Doe. But Peter was discouraged. Peter had messed up. Have any of you ever messed up? Huh? Have you ever messed up? If you haven't, please see me after service. I want to pet your halo. (laughs) But we messed up, and Peter messed up. I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of Johns out in the world and Janes out in the world that messed up, and they don't think they've got a hope in the world. They need you to go tell them. You go tell them, listen, God said, go tell Peter and the disciples that he's risen. There are people that are hurting today because he messed up. And Satan has got them blinded. And maybe some of you here today, you say, well, there's no hope for me because, man, I, I, I once was really on fire for God. I was really did this, did this, but I messed up. Did you mess up worse than Peter? He denied Jesus. Or did you mess up worse than Paul, Paul committed murder. He called himself the chiefest of sinners. He was a rascal. He tried to kill the church. He tried to wipe the church off the map. He said, go tell Paul. Jesus went himself and said, my grace is sufficient. So you may know a John or Jane that's Messed up. Over and over again, they've messed up. But go tell them that Jesus Christ is alive. He still delivers people. He still saves people. He still ministers to people. He still loves us. He still forgives us. He loves us with the unconditional love. And he'll welcome you back with open arms. I've told this story several times, but it's one of my favorites. A man was riding on the train, and a man got on the train, and the only seat was next to this preacher. And the preacher was there next to him, and he noticed the guy was very agitated and fearful and fretful. And so he just began to talk to him, and, and, and finally the, guy, the young man opened up to him and says, well, he said, preacher... I made a mess of things. My mom and dad were godly, godly people, and I just didn't want to live that life. And it got so bad at home that I was so rebellious that one day I hit my mama. And my dad said I had to leave. That he would not tolerate in his house. And I understand it. So I left home. I've traveled all over the country, and I've The spiral just went further down and further down and further down. And I found myself out on the West Coast. And one day I was out walking just wondering what in the world had happened. And I heard some singing in a little church. And I went into that church and I gave my heart to God. Now I'm going back home. And the preacher said, well, do you know if they're going to let you back home? He said, I don't know. He said, that's the reason that I, I'm, I'm nervous. I wrote my dad and told him if, I, if it was okay for me to come home, I was going to take the train, and this train goes right by our house. And out by the, between our house and the railroad track is an apple tree. And he says, if it was okay for me to come home, would he tie a white ribbon 
on that tree. And I'd get off at the next stop, come home. But if it wasn't okay, and I totally understand, I messed up. I did terrible. I understand it. But I said, if if there's just a a rag tied around that tree, I said, preacher's right around the curve here, said, I can't look. Would you look? Would you find out for me? So they rounded the curve, and the preacher said, son, you don't have a thing to worry about. Looks like that apple tree is full of white blooms. They've tied white ribbon all over that tree. And there's an old couple out there with a bed sheet waving it up and down. Say, come home, come home, come home. And I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people like Peter. It's messed up. Rebelled. God says, come on home. And I know this is an unusual way of taking that message. But as I read it, Go tell John. Every one of us knows a John or a Jane. We may not know their names, and we may. You may could even put your name in there. Go tell Gator. Go tell Bob. But God's wanting us to go and tell. Tell what? That Jesus Christ still lives and he loves us with an unconditional love and he's commissioned us to spread that news go tell John go tell John and I'm praying that this message this morning will do two things number one if you're not prepared to meet the Lord you'd realize you're John and I've already told you today Today is the day of salvation. But then for some of you, God's telling you, go tell John. Go tell your neighbor. Go tell your friends. Go tell your enemies that Jesus Christ loves them. And that he's still able to do. John the Baptist said, he knew it. He said, is is this the one? we can tell him I know he's the one because I believed in him and this is what he's done for me bow your heads in prayer Holy Father we love you we thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness and your mercy have your way today with every head bowed never eye closed Apple tree's got tons of ribbon around it waiting for you to come home. I'm going to just simply ask, and we're going to wait just a moment. For those that you're the John that this message was about, you're the John or you're the Jane. And God spoke to you and said you need to get your right heart right with God. If that's you, I want you to slip out from where you are and just come to the front. And somebody will meet you and pray with you. Gonna wait just a moment for you. And then we're gonna pray for the others within the church body.